Hello Rocket Troops and welcome back to the HQ Admin Shade here with yet another face cam narration. I have no idea what I'm doing with my hand. Um, I have a face cam narration this time of a UU battle I had against AJ from our Twitch stream. If you've not checked out our stream yet, why not? Go ahead and give us a follow down below in the description so that way you'll be informed the next time we go live. Also make sure you follow us on Twitter if you have a Twitter so that way you can stay informed. Both of our YouTube videos we post every single day and also when we go live. So, also make sure you give this video a like, so that way if I get 15 likes, I can post a second video of the day for everybody to enjoy. So, without further ado, let me talk about these teams, and I'll go ahead and jump right into the battle. So, starting off, I have the Assault Vest Gallade, which actually is pretty popular both in the YouTube channel and also the Twitch stream. Um, I've used it both in OU and UU, and this thing is a star. It is a monster. Because it's, it has the utility both of knockoff and the priority of the Shadow Sneak and has Power Up Punch and also Drain Punch. Because I run Power Up Punch, I don't have to have any attack investment really. Um, so I run max HP, max defense actually. So it is a powerhouse, can take hits all day long and uh, actually proves very, very helpful in this battle against AJ. I also have the utility Crobat. It has the defog for the hazard removal, uh, which... My team doesn't care too, too much about it. I have the Levitate, I have both the Flying types on Crobat, obviously, and also the Star Raptor. Um, so I have the Defog, like I said, I have the Brave Bird. It also has Infiltrator, which I completely forgot about, and it really, really matters a lot in this battle, but I just completely forgot about the fact that it has Infiltrator. I eventually figured it out, but by that time, I'm a little, you know, dug myself a hole. So next up, I have my Melodic, which I was kind of afraid to use that much in this battle. Obviously the Infernape and the Flygon, um, maybe even the Snorlax, don't want to take Scald Burns or anything like that. But then AJ has the Dry Skin on Toxicroak and also the power of the Storm Drain Cradilly, and also the Jalescent sitting in the back that is um, almost always specially defensive. So I was afraid of that as well. So Melodic wasn't going to get a whole lot of utility this battle and I knew that ahead of time. But I knew that I could eat up a Flygon hit if it had to and also dish out um, a Scald if given the right opportunity. So I also have this Hydreigon, which is Choice Scarfed. Um, a lot of Hydreigons are running Choice Scarf these days. But I'm actually afraid of the Flygon mostly on AJ's team because Flygons most likely carry um, Choice Scarfed or Choice Banned. But based on the damage I see that it does in this battle, I definitely think that it's Choice Scarfed, especially after I see what it outspeeds later on in the battle. I also carry my mascot, the Admin Shade Dusclops which carries the curse pain split combo which is actually proven to be very helpful in countless scenarios so I definitely love Dusclops, one of my favorite Pokemon. And last but absolutely not least I have the Star Raptor which actually I had no idea was borderline. Somebody in the stream had to tell me that so um, AJ sorry about that I had no idea. AJ didn't seem to really care about that though. Um, kind of a weird decision to move it up to borderline it is a powerful Pokemon, most people run it with Choice Scarf. I run mine with a Band, just to give it that extra oomph. Um, but it is a very powerful Pokemon, I can kind of see where Smogon community is coming, for the, from the, uh, coming from with that. But at the same time, I feel like it's very uh, UU in, uh, in its nature. So we'd honestly just have to see where time takes Star Raptor. So on AJ's team, I go ahead. I went ahead and uh, highlighted a couple things on his team that were already going to give me some trouble. But a couple things I didn't talk about yet would be the Infernape and also the Snorlax. Now the Infernape, honestly, I'm not that afraid of at the start because I have the Star Raptor, I have the Crobat, and I also have the Melodic. So I felt like I could deal with it pretty well. But it actually proves to do more damage to my team than I'm comfortable with with uh, Flare Blitzes, which are insanely powerful on Infernape if you don't already know. So also there's the Snorlax, which I was not too ready for, because I don't see it that often, really. Um, I definitely should have seen the setup coming that it does later on in the battle, but you'll just have to see because it kind of wrecks my life. So let's just go ahead and jump into the battle without further ado, and we'll just get started. So everybody, thank you so much for stopping by the Twitch stream if you've done so and giving me battles, and just kind of uh, supporting Rocket HQ in general. We definitely appreciate it, so keep coming out. We really enjoy everybody being there. So AJ leads with the Flygon to start out with, which I wasn't too surprised with, because it does get the U-turn, which he then uses. Now, based on the damage that it does here on the Glade, um, it doesn't do too, too much. Uh, about 15, 10, 15%, I can't really tell from there. But it does enough that I'm definitely convinced that it is not uh, banded. So at this point, I'm hitting the I don't know what's about to happen button, so I go ahead and go for the knockoff. 
just to get it on something. I was hoping the Flygon would stay in, but I was not lucky enough for that to happen. And I hit the Cordelian Stay, which I'm fine with. So I go ahead and go for the Drain Punch as well, because I want to see how much damage I can do to this thing, especially because of its rock typing. It actually stays in, which kind of blows my mind, um, because I could definitely knock it out with another Drain Punch. But he, uh, AJ possibly predicted that. And I go for another knockoff, hoping that he would predict that, or uh, go ahead and go for that switch, and I would predict that. So I go ahead and go for a power punch, seeing as how this thing's going to stay in here with me, or at least try to. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and keep getting some attack raises, and he does a Giga Drain, probably not knowing that I would be indeed a uh, Salt Vest, and that Giga Drain does absolutely nothing. So I just go ahead and finish it off with a quick Drain Punch. I have my attack raised by one, so I'm feeling pretty good at this point and I get all my health back, so I am sitting pretty right now. So that is a dead Cradilly, which is nice because I didn't want my Melodic trying to go for Scalds on certain things, knowing that the Cradilly could switch in and Storm Drain that away. So the Flare Blitch comes from the uh, Infernape, which does way too much damage, um, and he gets the burn on it too. So this burn actually matters a whole lot in my opinion because I am slower, obviously, I don't run any speed investment, and I go for the Drain Punch, it does a decent amount. If I wasn't burned, it'd do more. Now, this is where it really matters, because if uh, I go for the Shadow Sneak here, because I do have that priority, it would be super effective against Infernape. Um, I mean, it is super effective, but at the same time, it would have done even more. Um, just kind of sad, because I feel like if I wasn't burned, I'd be able to do more with the Drain Punch and that. Probably would be able to KO the Infernape, and it wouldn't be able to wreak havoc on my team like it does with its remaining health that it has. So I just go ahead and switch in Missy here, which was kind of the obvious switch, but I also make the very obvious play of going for the Scald, which AJ very nicely predicts and goes into Toxicroak as a result. So I was afraid of this Toxicroak and still have nightmares about Toxicroak because I feel like it, when I play UU, Toxicroak sweeps. Whenever I get swept, it's always Toxicroak. So uh, he gets the dry skin from that and it doesn't have to worry about any kind of damage. And I know I can't do anything with Melodic, because this is my Toxic Mirror Coat Scald Melodic with Recover. So I'm not going to do literally anything to this Toxic Croak at all. So I decide to switch in my Dusclops to uh, use Curse, because most of the time these things set up sub and try to get bulk ups or swords dances or whatever it wants to do. So this is where I play like an idiot, because I completely forget that I have a Crobat with Infiltrator. I couldn't remember if my Crobat had Infiltrator or something else until I went into a summary of it and realized that that is indeed what I had. So in the meantime, I'm just trying to whittle this thing down with Curse. So I actually play not that great this battle just in general, but um, this is the only thing I can really think to do to this Toxic Croak at this point in time. So um, here I go for a Nightshade just to see if I'm able to... Uh, kill this thing, or not kill it, but at least bring it sub down. But instead, he uses a Sucker Punch, and he's like, Nightshade, and I'm like, ah. So, um, I go down there, and uh, he gets more curse damage, but at the same time, the thing I have to worry about the most is that Toxic Croaks almost always carry Drain Punch, especially since he has this subset. I'm definitely assuming that he does. And I switch in Missy, which is dumb. I keep forgetting that I have Crobat. Um, I don't look at it until, like, this battle's about halfway over, and I really should have switched in Star Raptor, even would be a better switch, but uh, I can't even remember why I switched in Melodic. I think I was trying to stall out with Curse, and then I realized he had Drain Punch, so he'd actually be able to almost stall me out instead. So that was poor plan on my part. Um, I'm not working around this um, Toxic Croak well, and honestly, that's why I don't like Toxic Croak. I just It's one of those Pokemon I just don't play that well around um, in general. So it's still affected by this Curse, and this, this is when I realized, wait a minute, I have a Crobat. Crobat has Infiltrator. Let's see what mine has. And it has Infiltrator. So I go ahead and switch it in now. And he goes for another bulk up, which I'm fine with because from his remaining health, I'll definitely be able to kill. Um, but at the same time, I have to worry about that Sucker Punch, which could, I didn't think at this point, could take me out, but I wasn't absolutely sure. I do have an, a defense investment on this Crobat, so I wasn't too, too concerned about that. And Curse definitely whittles him down a little bit more. So he goes for the Sucker Punch, which I was afraid of, and it does a lot of damage, but not enough to take me out, which I was very grateful for. And I go for the Brave Bird, so I can finally, finally, finally get this Crobat out of the way. It did wait, or Crobat, this Toxic Crook out of the way. Um, I was so glad because now 
my Malak might be able to do some more work without too much fear of worrying about the Storm Drain and or the Dry Skin. So then the Infernape switches in, and um, I thought that maybe he would outspeed, but I actually end up outspeeding. I go for the Roost just because, um, and I get a lot of my health back as a result, but he actually goes for the Thunder Punch, which I was sort of scouting for. I was trying to see if he switched in his Infernape to my Crobat, what was he trying to do? Um, and he actually does the good switch here and switches out because he obviously knows at this point that I am faster and switches in his nice little Choice Scarf Flygon as, uh, as a result of that because he knows after this hit, which wouldn't kill because he's at full HP, he would be able to knock me out because he does have the Scarf. So at this point, I definitely know that he does in fact have the Scarf. So I get a little bit health back because of the Black Sludge, but he just goes ahead and goes for the Outrage and locks himself in. He's not afraid because I don't have any fairies on my team or anything like that. So Flygon is free to just uh, run rampant on my team. So I switch in my uh, Melodic here that has almost full HP because I know that he'll it'll be able to uh, eat up an Outrage pretty well. But here I am unfortunate enough to uh, get critted on, I guess I should say. <laughs> And he gets the crit, and I just go for the skull to finish off the Flygon. Which I was happy about because one more Outrage would not be good on literally anything on my team. So I was able to get that out of the way, which was nice. So Melodic was able to do what I thought it would be able to do. Take an Outrage, or whatever it is that Flygon wanted to dish out, and go ahead and scald it and kill it. So Infernape switches in here and goes for the safe close combat. Surprising to go for the Thunder Punch, but... It was possible that he predicted that switch. I would have went for Thunder Punch personally, thinking that maybe the Star Raptor would come out. So the Melodic is dead, which isn't too bad because it wasn't going to do that much uh, work in the rest of the battle anyway. So at this point, I switch in Hide, which I know can kill because I am definitely faster. I have the Choice Scarf, and I go for the safe U-turn out just to kill this thing, get it out of the way. I didn't want to lock myself into a move. I knew that he had a couple pokes left that would be able to benefit from me being locked into something I didn't want to be locked into. So I switch in Swoop here, Swoop to Whoop, hoping that maybe I'll be able to do some work on his team with what he has left. Then he switches in the Jalescent. I'm like, great. Time to get toxic and all this stuff and have to deal with it. But I go for the Brave Bird and watch. Just watch. What? I, I, it blew my mind that I one shot at a Jalescent. It must be fully specially defensive or something. I had no idea. I didn't ask him, uh, AJ, what he ran on it, but good lord. I did way, way more damage than I thought. Then he switches in the Snorlax. Now this is where the battle gets really stally and awful and I play like garbage. So um, I'm not used to seeing a Snorlax. I know that it sets up and does a bunch of weird stuff, but I didn't know for sure uh, what I'd be able to do against it. He goes ahead and goes for a stockpile. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll be able to do some decent damage. I'm going to go for a safe Dark Pulse because I don't want to be stuck in here with this thing uh, with Draco because then I'll have to switch out again, which I actually probably should have went for in the first place. But he just stockpiles and my Dark Pulse does like nothing. So he goes for a second stockpile and he's sitting very pretty right now. So this Snorlax is going to be a big problem and I should have tried to act on that uh, earlier on in the battle, but... The fact is, is that I was afraid because this thing does have Body Slam, so between the Stealth Rock damage that Star Raptor would take from the Switch In, I do have Close Combat on the Star Raptor, between the Switch In and the Stealth Rock damage and the Body Slam that this thing could dish out at any time, I didn't know and I knew that would be literally my only chance to win, especially after seeing how little all these Dark Pulses are doing. So then all of my hopes and dreams get shattered here because this thing goes for a rest gets all of its health back, and I'm like, ugh, good. So I'm just going for Dark Pulses, and I go for more Dark Pulses for like four more turns before I try to do anything smart. Um, but like I said, um, this thing gets all of its health back, especially after it goes for the Belly Drum. So this thing is just, it's going to be able to sweep, period. Like it has Body Slam most likely, I assumed, and he actually ends up d uh, having Body Slam. He's still resting here, and I should have switched in Star after while he was taking a nap here. But at the same time, I didn't know when he was going to wake up. That's the thing about sleep. I wasn't sure um, exactly what I could do here. So he actually wakes up, and he gets a flinch because of the Dark Pulse. And this is the game. Like, this is where he wins the game, basically. Because I use the Dark Pulse. It doesn't do anything. I'm really hoping for a crit. I'm hoping to avoid all stat changes and do maybe even half of the Dark Pulse. Um, but he actually stockpiles to three here, and that's when it's game, basically. Because... Um, I even thought after I switched my Star Raptor, I'm not going to be able to kill this thing. I knew 
that this Norlax was going to sweep, not sweep, but passive sweep my team by going for all of these boosting moves, and I'm just super boring and just keep going for Dark Pulses, just hoping for the best. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not that lucky. Um, the RNG gods are not with me, and he body slams me and just takes me completely out. And here, I have to do the only thing I can do with my last poke. I go ahead and send out Swoop to Whoop, the borderline uh, beast, and I go for the close combat, thinking that maybe I'd be able to do some damage. And I do more than I thought I would do. I honestly think that if he didn't go for the third stockpile, I'd probably be okay, and I'd probably be able to Oko it. And I can't remember if this was his last poke or not. I think it was. So that was very unfortunate. He body slams and uh, wins the battle. So very good game, AJ. Fantastic battle. Yes, Norlax was his last Pokemon. Um, played very well. I played very poorly. Several different places. I wish I would have known Crobat had <laughs> Infiltrator. And I wish I would have acted differently against this Norlax. But it's all about growing. It's all about playing. It's all about knowing the tier better. So I don't have too, too much experience with UU. But I'm getting more experience. I'm getting better every day. Um, and I hope to do more UU battles. If you guys do like the fact that I'm doing UU and want to see more UU battles both on stream and also on the YouTube channel, make sure you give this video 15 likes and some comments down below about what you like, what you don't like, what you would change about my team, what you think is cool about the team, and also AJ's team. Um, feedback is how we make all of our content better, so we really appreciate everything that you guys give us back um, in terms of comments and stuff like that. So. Without further ado, that's about all I have for you, so make sure you subscribe if you've not done so already, and make sure you follow us on Twitch and Twitter. So this is Admin Shade signing off for Rocket HQ. Have a great day, guys.